Hi, I'm Senator Tom Udall, and you're watching the Udall Update. Thank you for joining me for the Udall Update. After the great response to our first episode, I'm back to give you an inside look at what's happening in our nation's capital and how it impacts life here in New Mexico. For today's episode, I join you from my home here in Santa Fe. We'll take a look at how the Recovery Act and other federal projects are making an impact across our state. I'll show you a program that's helping New Mexico small businesses regain their manufacturing edge. And we'll see innovative ideas for keeping our communities healthy. Finally, you'll get a front row seat to a special ceremony that took place in Washington to celebrate the life of the most influential person in my life, my dad, Stuart Udall. But first, join me on a trip around New Mexico. I spent August and September visiting projects that are creating new jobs here in New Mexico, boosting our economy, strengthening our infrastructure, and nurturing innovation. Over the Senate's summer work period, Senator Tom Udall was home in New Mexico for important meetings and to track the progress of projects across the state. In August, Tom was in Las Cruces to talk clean energy, small business, and the counter-narcotics strategy on our southern border. But first, a trip to Moriarty to co-host the New Mexico Broadband and Smart Grid Summit with Senator Jeff Bingaman. The conference brought leaders from government and business together to improve broadband access and affordability. The question that I get more from family members is how do we keep our young people in our communities? And that is asked especially in rural communities. And I think the way we do that is broadband and broadband creating jobs. Then it was down to Las Cruces for the Good Jobs and Strong Local Economy Luncheon with the Hispano Chamber of Commerce, the Las Cruces Green Chamber of Commerce, and the New Voice of Business, where Tom discussed clean energy opportunities for small business. This is a really wonderful thing. Business people standing up and saying, uh, we need to move in the direction of clean energy. Next, Tom saw clean energy in the making at Sapphire Energy, just west of Las Cruces. Here, researchers are exploring ways to grow the chemical equivalent of crude oil out of algae. It holds the potential to be a clean way to produce domestic oil, cultivated in New Mexico and usable in existing machinery like cars. Tom supported Sapphire's bid for a recovery grant, which will now fund a $100 million project to develop an algae biorefinery in Luna County. Sapphire's facilities are also a great opportunity for NMSU students, who are getting hands-on experience in a field that's literally growing. The last stop in Las Cruces was to discuss border security and drug trafficking with officials at the National Southwest Border Counter-Narcotics Strategy Session, which Tom hosted and moderated. I was very heartened uh, since we left Washington to see this $600 million piece of legislation uh, that uh, has been signed by the president and, and is dedicating additional resources to the very issues that we've uh, been talking about. In September, Tom visited the north part of the state, first stopping in Los Alamos. At Fuller Lodge, Tom met with the Los Alamos Chamber of Commerce and the Commerce and Development Corporation to discuss the lab's role in the regional economy, public-private partnerships, and diversifying the local economy. Tom then took a trip out to Los Alamos National Lab, to see how recovery dollars are funding critical environmental cleanup efforts. More than $200 million in recovery funding were secured to excavate a hazardous waste landfill, demolish 12 buildings, and drill 16 new groundwater monitoring wells. The next day, Tom headed to Taos to see economic development projects, first stopping at the Taos County Economic Development Corporation. The TCEDC provides support for emerging small businesses. Tina, from Tina's Barritas, uses the kitchen to make burritos for her small business. Tom learned the art of the burrito fold. Okay. And then label. There we go. Yes, and then you put perfect. a label on and you're ready to go. The TCEDC was recently awarded a USDA grant of $300,000 a year to spur new small business growth. Next stop was the new Taos County Complex. Tom sponsored the county's award of a $15 million USDA loan to build the new center. 
The new complex brings together the county's administrative and justice services for a one-stop shop for residents. Tom then went to the UNM Taos Clower campus to visit new facilities built with the help of federal grants. The school is expanding learning to the community with a green jobs training program for high schoolers and a kids campus that focuses on early learning. All the school's electric needs are powered by a large solar array completed in 2009. The next day, Tom was close to home in Santa Fe to see important projects in the community there. First was a visit to Los Amigos Inc., a small business that weatherizes homes so that residents can save money on their energy bills. And they do it by sucking the air out of your house. In this particular house, we have quite a bit to go. We have about 800 cubic feet per minute of air that we need to find and reduce. They check for any leaks and make sure the outside air can't get in or out, which will mean big energy savings this winter. Tom then headed over to Via Alegre, an affordable housing development for low-income families and senior citizens. Thanks in part to $10 million in recovery funding, 150 jobs are being created by the construction of 144 new homes. Last stop of the day was the Hopewell Mann Community Center, with facilities that include an adult learning lab, after-school programs, and English as a second language training for both adults and Santa Fe Boys and Girls Club youth. The center received a recovery grant and federal broadband funding to help pay for internet access and computers. On the final day of the trip, Tom traveled west to Cibola and McKinley counties to see the great things young people are doing. In Acoma, Tom met with youth members of the Southwest Conservation Corps, who are learning how to be great stewards of the land. This is part of the trail right here? Yeah, this is actually part of the trail here, and it goes okay. all the way around. How long have you been with them? Uh, about how many months? This year, this summer. Yeah, this summer. This summer. Yeah. In 2009, Tom introduced the Public Land Service Corps Act, which would create an Indian Youth Service Corps, inspired by the SEC program here in Acoma. Tom then headed to Thoreau High School in McKinley County to congratulate seniors for achieving their adequate yearly progress goals. Student leaders gave him a presentation on their success, and Tom answered questions about the issues they were interested in. Um, when I ran for the Congress, I ran one time and lost. I ran a second time and lost. When I decided to run for the third time for the state attorney general's office, I think my wife and my daughter thought I was crazy. But the third time was the charm. And if there's any lesson in it, it's that if you really care about something, you know, don't let the obstacles hold you back. That wrapped up Tom's travel for this summer work period in the state. To learn more about these events or the issues that they focused on, visit Tom's online office at tomudall.senate.gov. This recession has been the longest and the deepest since the Great Depression, and New Mexico's been hit hard. But our state's resilience is showing in our small businesses and our entrepreneurs. The Recovery Act and other federal programs have helped to cushion the blow and the economy is starting to turn around. As our small businesses grow, we need to make sure that we're competitive in the global economy. The U.S. Department of Commerce has a program to help manufacturers become more efficient called the Manufacturing Extension Partnership, or MEP. Desert Paper, a company in Albuquerque, is taking advantage of the MEP program to improve their bottom line. My name is Ella Leeper and I'm the owner of Desert Paper and Envelope Company. We're an envelope manufacturing company and the only envelope manufacturer in the state of New Mexico. We knew that we needed to seek some improvements in reduction of waste and on-time delivery. So looking for those different processes and disciplines, uh, I learned about lean manufacturing. Kind of our core business is to help them improve their efficiency, their effectiveness, um, to introduce new products, to improve their quality systems, just whatever the, the small manufacturer, small to medium manufacturer needs to be more profitable and to grow. You really address all of your processes and your procedures. And it's identifying every piece of waste 
that happens in those procedures and documenting all of that so that it's repetitive, so that you can be standardized and consistent in your processes. So we're trying to help the small entrepreneur who has a great idea, knows how to make one, but doesn't know how to manufacture a thousand or ten thousand. So we're trying to teach them how to do that. We're one of the fastest in the industry in turn times and we have several customers that have very sensitive material that we can make and print an envelope in a day. And that didn't used to be very possible. It would upset the apple cart if we did it. And now the team just takes it, puts it into the process, and it doesn't seem like this putting out a fire. That, that's something that we don't really say around here very much. Companies that have improved their efficiency through MEP say that it's a well-kept secret. Well, we're letting the cat out of the bag. You can find out more about MEP online at www.newmexicomep.org. Now it's time for our Sensible Solutions segment, a chance to take a closer look at a piece of public policy. Over the past year, we had a national debate on how to reform health care. Throughout it, I argued, in reality, we have a sick care system, not a health care system. Sure, we can fix you when you get sick, but we need to do a better job of preventing you from getting sick in the first place. The Affordable Care Act addresses this problem by putting a strong emphasis on preventive care, like recommended screenings, vaccinations, and counseling. Here's a list of some of the preventive services you might be eligible for in a new health insurance plan at no extra cost to you. Blood pressure, diabetes and cholesterol tests, cancer screenings like colonoscopies, vaccinations against diseases like measles, TB or meningitis, flu and pneumonia shots, and counseling on quitting smoking, losing weight, treating depression, and other topics. These services are required on most new plans, so contact your insurance provider to see if you're eligible. To learn more about prevention, visit www.healthcare.gov. Preventive care doesn't stop at the doctor's office. Here in New Mexico, there are some programs where you can take great strides towards a healthier lifestyle. Take a look for yourself. I'm a family physician in Cuba, New Mexico. I've been in practice here for a little over 35 years. A uh, step into Cuba, among other things, is, is a program of built environment and accessing the natural environment for exercise. It's easy uh, to take care of uh, conditions in the exam room setting, but it's uh, a lot more difficult to deal with uh, lifestyle change that uh, leads to better health in the long term. So we're trying to um, encourage people to, to be physically active and one way we've done that is to have a trail bladed around this park and it's actually um, done a lot uh, for people. We find that people are really using it and we're also doing enhancement projects, landscaping projects. We've um, just planted a hundred new trees and last year we planted seedlings and we brought in boulders, um, sandstone and granite boulders as landscaping features to make it beautiful so that people will enjoy using it and want to use it more often. And so far it's had pretty good results. The vast majority of people in Cuba know about the program, support it, uh, many participate in it and uh, we hope that we're uh, changing life for the better as a result of it. We knew there was a great infrastructure of loop trails and systems in the city, parks that were being underutilized. So we brought in the Parks and Recreation Group the New Mexico Parks and Recreation Association, other parks folks, and started thinking about how we could um, develop a trails network for the people who need physical activity. With prescription trails, the city, in a collaboration with the National Park Service and other organizations, have identified uh, and assessed numerous parks throughout the city. Uh, 
then compiled the information uh, both in a written format and on the web in such a way that individuals can access this to find a good place to uh, get exercise. If a patient is interested in starting a walking program and their health has been screened and they've been found to be suitable to start a walking program, we may take a prescription and ask them where they might like to start. And I found over time that uh, individuals who really had no interest at all in exercising or felt that they could not fit it into their schedule, gradually over time will get out and start walking. On the first day of spring this year, my father, Stuart Lee Udall, passed away at the age of 90. In his public life, he served as a congressman and as Secretary of the Interior. In his personal life, he instilled in me the values of public service and fighting for what you believe in. Dad was a trailblazer in preserving America's special places, advocating for the arts, and fighting for people whose voices are seldom heard. And to recognize his achievements, this fall, the U.S. Department of Interior Building in Washington was named in his honor. Now, I'd like to share a few of the kind words participants in the dedication ceremony had to say about my dad. I thought Stuart Udall would live forever. Um, and for many reasons I thought he would. He was robust, he was active to his last months, uh, and he served so many important roles in the broader clan. He was a mentor to many of us. Uh, although my wonderful Aunt Lee, who had a wicked sense of humor, once took advantage of such a situation when at a family gathering I toasted Secretary Salazar, Stuart Udall as acting as, as if he were a second father and playing that role in the Moda Udall clan. And Lee very sweetly stood up and said, Stuart, thank God I know where you've been all these years. You've been over at Moe's house fathering his children when we were looking for you in our household. I had a long and committed and in some ways addictive, I would confess, career in, in uh, climbing mountains and being a mountain guy. My father, after a while, began to send me newspaper articles Al Simpson about those who've been maimed, lost, and uh, have died climbing some of the world's highest mountains. Stuart, on the other hand, would call me wanting to hear about my latest adventure. And he truly was an adventurer. He was always looking to push the limits. And for him, a life well lived had risk implicit in it. We, we all grow up in Southern Arizona and Arizona per se uh, with the Udall ethic. and. Uh, and it's very, very much a living legacy. And it, uh, an ethic that talks about the environment and what it means to protect and cherish this beautiful gift that we have. It talks about people, the first Americans, and the need to treat each other with dignity and respect. It talks about protecting and conserving our national treasures the special places that we live in, because they do make the quality of life of all of us better. Those are the legacies. I was very fortunate uh, in beginning this career. I think Stuart might question it now, uh, but that uh, I got the good seal of approval from Stuart Udall and met the world and uh, in, no more, in no small part, uh, he bears some responsibility for me being able to stand before you today. Stuart Udall loved this country. He loved its mountains and its deserts, its rivers and its seashores, its wildlife and its people. Another great conservationist, Gifford Pinchot, once remarked that he had been governor of Pennsylvania now and then, but he was a forester all the time, and he would be until his dying day. 
Stuart Udall was Secretary of Interior for eight years, but he served this country and he worked to make it a better place and to preserve and protect its natural beauty all the time and until his dying day. His legacy is all about us in the national parks and monuments, the national seashores and trails, the wild and scenic rivers, the wilderness areas, historic sites, wildlife refuges that he helped to create, and in the, and in the landmark environmental legislation that he helped to write and to pass. He's no longer with us, but the places that he helped preserve and the laws that he helped to forge and the example of public service that he set endure. And they will continue to endure as long as we, the beneficiaries of his great legacy, have the good sense and the vigilance and the fortitude and the dedication to preserve them. Well, I was invited to speak because my mother and Stu Udall were lovers <laughs> of the natural beauty of this country. <laughs> now, now, Daddy complained that whenever he turned around, Mother was off with Stu somewhere, uh, rafting down the Tetons, or hiking in the Big Bend, or at the edge of a cliff overlooking the Pacific, or maybe, at the John Adams house with John Adams' great-great-granddaughter. Stu was always up for adventure, and Mother and Stu savored every moment together. In him, she'd found a soulmate. According to Mother's, Stuart Udall felt that conservation was at the top of the agenda for the nation's health, joy, and abundant life of our citizens. Now, Stu inspired people in all walks of life to fight as for what he called it a clean, tidy, unspoiled America. Having been a member of Congress himself, he knew that he needed to take the Congress along on this journey, and he convinced the Congress to pass legislation to help prevent air and water pollution. With the passage of the Wilderness Act, two to three percent of the acreage of this great country was left in its natural state for all generations to enjoy for recreation and, as Mother called it, breathing room. So I leave you now with the pledge he made as he left as Secretary of Interior. My involvement as a private citizen in the causes that I have espoused as Secretary of this department will continue. If we're ever to win the great ending battle, the never ending battle for these values, there can be no resignation or withdrawal from the constant quest for an environment that promotes and fulfills the highest human attributes. And when I visited him in New Mexico, more than 40 years later, Stu was still working on his dream. Thank you. The last of the conversations I had uh, with Stuart uh, a few months uh, ago uh, had to do with uh, my calling him. Uh, to ask him for assistance. I'd had a conversation with uh, Tom again about uh, the America's Great Outdoors Initiative. And uh, many of you were here on April the 16th when President Obama came to Interior and we announced uh, our efforts for a 21st uh, century conservation agenda around the America's Great Outdoors. So I called him and he was already weak and he was feeble, but he was still strong in his voice. And he said to me, he said, uh, I made the request. He said, I'd like to pull together a group of people and I'd like you to help me and uh, Tom Strickland and David Hayes, the rest of the people who are putting this agenda together. And he said to me, he said to me, Ken, he says, um, I will help you in every way that I can. He says, uh, Tom and Mark Udall are there to help you now, along with so many people who have been a part of this agenda on behalf of our planet for so long. He said, but rest assured that I will always be with you. I will always be with you. And so today, as we celebrate his life, he is with us, and he will always be with us. And the legacy that he has left is a legacy which we will celebrate. But it's also a call to action in terms of the legacy that we must build to continue to protect this uh, fragile planet, uh, this place, uh, which is our habitat and our home. And uh, in that vein, it is time to name 
the Department of Interior Building after a, the greatest United States Secretary of Interior, Stuart Udall. Before we end this episode of the Udall Update, it's time to take a look at the messages you've been sending in to Tom's inbox. An important part of my job is getting feedback and responding to questions from you. That's the motivation behind the Udall Update, keeping you informed on the topics you're interested in. So let's take a look at a question. Don from Albuquerque writes, Tom, I got your email on what health care reform means to you. I did not see anything about seniors. My question is, what does it mean to seniors? Don, thanks for writing in. There are a lot of great provisions in the Affordable Care Act for seniors. Already this year, seniors have been receiving $250 checks when they hit the prescription drug donut hole in 2010. Starting next year, if you have high prescription drug costs that put you in the donut hole, you'll get a 50% discount on covered brand name drugs when you hit the coverage gap. Health reform also strengthens Medicare in the long term by reducing waste, fraud, and abuse, and providing hospitals new strong incentives to improve the quality of care you receive. If you're retired and you're 55 or older, but not yet eligible for Medicare, the Affordable Care Act has created the Early Retiree Reinsurance Program to help your employer cover you. Businesses have to apply to participate in the program. Here are some of the sponsors participating so far. Los Alamos National Security, LLC, New Mexico Retiree Healthcare Authority, PM Resources, Inc., Sandia Corporation, and the University of New Mexico. The next message comes from Amanda in Santa Fe. Tomorrow, after having been unemployed for 14 months, I start my new job. One place that you cannot really visit to see how the recovery monies are helping New Mexico are the countless New Mexicans like me for whom the stimulus money was a lifeline. Had the Recovery Act not been passed, there was no way my family could have afforded COBRA benefits. I'm disappointed to hear people say the stimulus was a waste of money. It hasn't been because I know on a very personal level. Please keep up the fight to remind Americans that the stimulus was nothing short of a benefit to this country. Thank you. Amanda, thank you for your message and congratulations on your new job. You're certainly not alone among New Mexicans who have found themselves out of work during the Great Recession. While we have been hit hard, the Recovery Act has helped cushion the blow through programs like the extension of unemployment insurance that you mentioned. For New Mexicans like Amanda, this has been a necessary lifeline to stay afloat and look for new work while the economy rebounds. So there's a glance at my inbox. If you want to submit a message, go to my website, tomudall.senate.gov, and click Contact Tom. And that's it for this episode of the Udall Update. You can find out more about the issues we covered today on my website. Also, be sure to join the conversation on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, watch my videos on YouTube, and see my photos on Flickr. Until next time, thank you for joining me. Cheers.